Hello and welcome to the International Health Promoting Campuses Symposium. My name is Matt Dolph and I'm joining you from Vancouver, Canada, situated on the traditional, ancestral and unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish and tsleil peoples. I'm the director of the Office of Wellbeing Strategy at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada, and I'm co-chair of the Canadian Health Promoting Campuses Network, as well as the International Health Promoting Universities and Colleges Steering Committee, organizers of this event. One of the goals of this symposium is to strengthen student voice and engagement, and I'm therefore very pleased to introduce our two student hosts for the day. Georgia Yi is a Bachelor of Science student from the University of British Columbia and currently serves on the Board of Governors and Senate. And Julia Haas is doing her PhD at King's College London and a member of the Healthy Universities UK leadership team. Over to you, Julia and Georgia, and please enjoy the day, everyone. Hello and welcome everyone. It's incredible to be here with you. I'm coming to you from the UK, although I'm originally from Wisconsin in the States. Um, today's going to be a mix of presentations and interactive sessions across a variety of health promoting campuses topics. Um, but we do have to kick off with some practical items. So it's totally your choice, but we do suggest that you have your video off and then again on for discussion time. Um, throughout the day, we will kind of encourage participation and contribution and collaboration through a Padlet. Um, Gabrielle is going to be posting a link in the chat for the Padlet that you can use throughout the day. This is really going to be a shared kind of living resource that we can revise beyond the symposium today, which is really exciting. Um, so throughout the day, we will be using the chat function to provide extra links and information if you want to find out more. Um, but let's start off with kind of connecting with where you all are in the world. So Gabriella should have posted a link in the chat for a Mentimeter. Um, so you can enter the city or town where you are coming from today and we'll be able to see it and share. So I'm from originally a small town in Wisconsin, but now I am in London. Uh, we've got Duncan, Vancouver, Waterloo. Um, if I was doing the Mentimeter, I'd add London on here. Uh, what else do we have in the Mentimeter? We've got a Calgary in the chat. Love that. Where else are we coming from today? I think we have about 19, 21 countries, actually, of five continents um, represented here today with over 500 people, which is incredible. Montreal, Birmingham, Toronto, Tucson. All right, I'm going to Phoenix next week. That's cool. Um, Lots of incredible places. This, I think, is such an exciting piece here to see where everyone is coming from and so exciting that we'll be able to collaborate and connect throughout the day. Um, so it's going to be great to meet you all in breakout rooms. And thank you so much to everyone for participating in that. Like I said, we've got 500 people from over 21 countries and five continents. So I'm mega excited over here. Um, well, that's a bit of the practicalities. I'm going to pass on to Georgia to kick us off. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad to meet everybody. Um, my name is Georgia. I'm in my fifth year of undergraduate studying biology with a minor in health and society um, here at UBC in Canada. Um, and as Matt mentioned, I also serve on the UBC Board of Governors and Senate. I am also so grateful to be joining you all today from the traditional ancestral unceded territory of the of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish peoples and indigenous territories across British Columbia. Some of you may be joining us from other territories and are joining us from all over the world as we just did in that exercise. And a resource that I like to use is nativeland.ca and I encourage you to learn more about the territory that you're on um, as well as uh, share your own land acknowledgement um, we practice uh, land acknowledgements for those who are not aware of the practice of land acknowledgements at many ceremonies, events, and lectures as an act of recognizing the history of colonialism as an act of undoing Indigenous erasure and affirming the need to uphold Indigenous rights and sovereignty. As we consider the topic of well being, sustainability, and health promotion today, I hope that we can also reflect on how our frameworks of health, mental health, well being have been historically constructed from a Western colonial and Eurocentric perspective. 
During this pandemic, there has been a lot of discussion of resilience and how we can become more resilient as individuals, but we need to talk about what causes us to be more resilient. As a racialized settler, I think about my own ties to colonialism and racism. When my great grandfather, who is one of the first, most resilient people I know, he first came to Canada as a young boy from China, and he was mugged when he was on the ship and became very sick. No white person in Canada would sell him food or sell him thread or medicine to mend his pants or treat his illnesses, but he was taken in and raised by the Siksika First Nations as a community of mutual support, care, and historical allyship between the Chinese and Indigenous communities. In these places where we see unwellness, this these colonial frameworks have a tendency to pathologize the suffering caused by systemic injustice, but I hope that we can challenge ourselves today in these sessions to ask what our suffering is trying to say about the injustices created by oppressive systems and learn how to create communities of care, solidarity and justice. It is important to recognize that this land has long been a piece of a place of community and learning for Indigenous peoples, and part of our relationship to keeping the land healthy, we must also honour the leadership of Indigenous peoples who have long been stewards of this land. I hope today we can actively think about the ways that we can design supportive systems that correct these injustices, build communities of support and well-being, decolonize health and ways of care, and create cultural safety in our university and college communities. And now it is my absolute pleasure to introduce our opening keynote speaker, Dr. Shannon Waters. Dr. Waters is the medical health officer for the Cowichan Valley region with Island Health in Canada. Dr. Waters, I will turn it over to you. Hi, Naita. Hi, Chika. Good morning. Uh, thanks for sharing those very touching words, Georgia. And um, I just really want to acknowledge all the people from all different parts of Mother Earth who are here on this call to morning, this morning. And uh, just I'm grateful for the amount of time that I have to share a bit with you all about the journey of health promotion that we're on as a collective community around Mother Earth and some of my thoughts about how to achieve the highest health and well-being for all, which comes through recognizing <clears throat> that Mother Earth is our health system. So as Georgia has just done, I want to share a little bit about myself and about the place that I'm calling in from. So I am Hulkamiknam, Coast Salish, from Stamanus First Nation here on Vancouver Island, where I'm calling from today. And I have a lot of family ties to Cowichan tribes as well. In acknowledging my people, which is also the place where I am from, I'm sharing this picture here, which is of Halkmeetnam home territory. In the blue, you can see what is listed here as the Strait of Georgia, but now known as the Salish Sea. And in the red star there is a place called Hatotna which is where I'm calling from today, also known as Maple Bay. This depiction here shows a number of different colors and, and areas and spaces around our home territory. And what this really represents is the relationships we have with different areas of the place we call home. And in sharing a little bit about myself today, I'm gonna highlight a specific place, not too far from where, from where I am, right now, which is called Sfokas also known as Mount Provo, which is a very sacred mountain within my home territory. And in speaking about health promotion today, I'm gonna to go way, way upstream. So far upstream that I'm taking you to the origin story of my peoples, the origin story of Hulkami and people within our home territory. And how Swahis play, plays into that is that is actually one of the locations where one of the first peoples, my ancestors, fell from the sky. So that area I showed you on the map is a very sacred place for me and my people because it is where some of our, our, our story begins, the most upstream. And there are many um, depictions of this story orally and some that are written down. There's a few uh, 
online and written resources here that, that tell versions of this story. And within that story, it talks about how the first men fell from the sky onto different areas of our territory, Swahis being one, and the first woman walked from Sauk to Cowichan to meet these men and to start what became the Cowichan people. Now, at different times in my life when I've heard this story, I've, I've integrated it in different ways. And at one point in my life, I was, I was a little bit you know, frustrated that I didn't know more about the women's story. There was a lot told about the men falling, falling from the sky and getting to know the territory. They walked throughout our territory. They got to know the land, the water, the mountains, the plants, the animals, but we didn't hear much about the women's journey. So what that actually prompted me to do in that time was actually see that that was an invitation from my ancestors to place myself within this larger story, this origin story of my peoples. And now that we're in a digital age, what I did is I typed into Google Maps, Soup to Cowichan, and I looked at what that might look as a walking journey. And actually this map here that you see is a pretty similar depiction of what came up in front of me. And so you see from the south end of the island around south, there's a, there's a walking trail, which actually follows quite a bit of water, uh, Souk Lake and Shawnigan Lake coming up to the Cowichan Valley. And once I saw this map, I couldn't unsee it. I realized this was an invitation and I needed to uh, walk my body through this journey that my ancestors had taken. And when I took that walk, so many experiences were, were had. I was physically moving my body. I had to, you know, exert myself. I, I walked with a sister friend. You can see me and her here on the bottom slide. We had to enter what was a protected watershed. So we had to wait at a gate at one point and have people um, come and meet us and escort us through a certain part of our, our sacred waters that we, we use to um, nourish ourselves as people without, throughout this area. And I... Uh, had, you know, dreams uh, while we were sleeping in a tent at night and kind of worried about whether cougars or bears might be coming around. But it really helped place me within this larger story of my people and our connection to the land with people around me, the animals, the plants, the water, the land. And so that taking that walk really helped cement for me what has kept us well as Hulkamitan people for generations upon generations. And in, and in, in telling you that, I, I share a little bit as well here about our perspective on health and wellness. This is something that some of you may have seen before. It is a depiction of health and wellness that BC First Nations, so First Nations within the province of Canada that I'm within, came upon to help depict, to share, to visualize how we view our health and wellness. It's not something that's uh, attributed to a particular community or particular nation, but rather a, a, a combination of many different ways of seeing things. And I wanna highlight here the green circle within this depiction, which is the people that surround us and the places we, from, we are from. And so people share the places they're from here today. And you can see here within this green circle, we have family, land, nations, and communities. So we are from families, we are from nations, we are from communities, and we are also from the land. And I wanna uh, recognize here that the land is listed with the other peoples that we are from. It is where we are from and it is our identity. And it's more than just the earth, it includes the ocean, air, foods, medicines, and all of nature. And for myself as a Hokkamitnam woman, I just wanna share this, um, picture here that was put together by our treaty group, the Hulkmeetnam Treaty Group, which shows on the top a picture of one of our villages, and it says we are not of the land. And then the bottom, a picture of some of our chiefs from generations ago that says we are the land. So we are not of the land, we are the land. And that depiction of wellness shows that we are from the land, just like we are from our families, communities, and um, nations. And, in, in, and when we, that connection to the land is so fundamental, we, our lawmaking authority empowers us to the, be the architects of a sustainable future for our lands because our lands are us. In sharing another circle or another area of the First Nations perspective on health and wellness, I wanna now highlight the yellow circle. This is the overarching values that support and uphold our wellness. Here you can see wisdom, 
respect, responsibility, and relationships. And these are things that I center myself with in every day in the work that I do as a public health physician and as a medical health officer within my home territory. These are the things that build us strength and relate us to the world around us. So I mentioned that I am a medical health officer within my home territory, and that is an honor, privilege, and a challenge to do. As a whole community in person, I work within a colonial system, a colonial health system. And to try and do with the busy days that, that arise to me, I really think about some of my teachings of my ancestors in you know, how do, we, how do we work towards what we want to see? So in my role here in my home territory, what I want to see is connection to nature, mental well-being, and maternal child and family well-being. Some of my friends and colleagues are like, whoa, that's all over the map. That's a lot of things. How can you work on all that? And I see these as all in relationship with each other, all intimately connected. And if we have any positive benefit in other places, all places will rise. And I see these all connected to my ancestral story. The woman who, who traveled from soup to couch and the men who fell from the sky, they connected to nature, they connected to the world that was around them, which supported their mental well-being. And then they came together to, to form the couch and people and have maternal child and family well-being. In this work, I am uh, really working, I have priorities because all these areas do have barriers. Uh, we're, we're faced with a lot of challenging times right now on Mother Earth. We have to look at climate disruption and biodiversity collapse. We have mental health conditions and we have maternal child and family affliction. And being a public health physician and looking at the data we have in these areas, both qualitative and quantitative, I can say these areas are where we have the most significant threat, the largest burden on our population, and the ability for the highest return on investment in time and other resources that we put in. So some of the things that I, I, I think we have a real opportunity here in BC and around the world, and I do want to acknowledge uh, the uh, Mali colleague that's going to be closing off, Sion, who's going to be closing off the conference here today, for some of the amazing work that's been done in the area of wisdom, respect, responsibility, and relationships in New Zealand, Aotearoa. And here I wanna highlight the United Nations declarations on the rights of indigenous peoples, and that it states that we as indigenous peoples have the right to maintain and strengthen our distinctive spiritual relationship with the places we call home, our traditionally owned lands, territories, waters, and coastal seas. And here in the province that I'm in, we have a really amazing opportunity with what is called the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples Act, which passed in 2019, which actually requires that all legislation within this province aligns with the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, and therefore protects our spiritual relationships with the territories that we call home. We have now seen a rising evidence around the world that, this, that the connection of Indigenous peoples to our land, that sovereignty that we have, that I spoke about with Halkamitan and people stating that this allows us to be sustainable architects for our land. This is recognized internationally as sustainability. This United Nations report on biodiversity and ecosystem services shows that nature is declining less rapidly in indigenous people's land than in other lands, and that governance, including customary institutions and management regimes and co-system, co-management regimes that involve indigenous peoples and local communities can be an effective way to safeguard nature. So our traditional knowledge and what is being seen through the Western world is, is, is combining to show that this approach is sustainability. So what does this mean to uh, universities, to places that we spend a lot of our time, where we learn? And myself, I spent 13 years in university at the University of Calgary in Alberta and at the University of BC and in Vancouver. So my time there was very important to me and prepared me a lot for my role that I'm holding now, as well as the journey with my ancestors in my origin story uh, prepared me for the role I have right now. And what I really want to close with is some thoughts about how universities, in, especially in this context of being health promoting institutions, how we can bring that forward and make difference in this area. And I really think 
that bringing this worldview forward allows us to center, center our relationships with watersheds, land, the environment, to all of our decision making. That's what I think is really needed in this time. And I think through doing that type of work, in, through centering that relationship with the world around us, from the teachings that show that that is our health, that sustains our health, that has done for generations and generations, and for my people, since, you know, as far upstream as you can go, to the, to the basis of our origin story, if we center that, we truly come to the realization that Mother Earth is our health system, and that this, through this recognition and strengthening this relationship, we can come to promote health and to bring the greatest health for the world around us, for our land, animal, plant uh, neighbors, and for all the humans that are you know, around Mother Earth on this call, if through strengthening that, we can recognize and value Mother Earth as our health system and bring about greatest health for all. So with that, I raise my hand and say hi, Tsapka. That's thank you in my language. Thank you for listening for the words I had to share today and for allowing me to share a bit about how I view health and how I think we're all part of the health system with the natural world we have around us. Aichka. <laughs>